Chapter 1 I do not have a physical body, yet I am writing this book. You have heard of ghost hunters. I can quite literally be called a ghost writer, though I do not approve of the term ghost. It is true that I am not usually seen in physical terms. I do not like the word spirit either. And yet, if your definition of that word implies the idea of a personality without a physical body, then I would have to agree that that description fits me. I address an unseen audience. However, I know that my readers exist, and therefore, I shall ask each one of them now to grant me the same privilege. I write this book through the auspices of a woman who I have become quite fond. To others, it seems strange that I address her as Rupert and him. But the fact is that I have known her in other times and places by other names. She has been both a man and a woman. And the entire identity who has lived these separate lives can be designated by the name of Rupert. Names are not important, however. My name is Seth. Names are simply designations, symbols, and yet, since you must use them, I shall also. I write this book with the cooperation of Rupert, who speaks the words for me. In this life, Rupert is called Jane, and her husband Robert Butts takes down the words that Jane speaks. I call him Joseph. My readers may suppose that they are physical creatures bound within physical bodies imprisoned within bone, flesh, and skin. If you believe that your existence is dependent upon this corporal image, then you feel in danger of extinction for no physical form lasts and nobody, however beautiful in youth, retains the same vigor and enchantment in old age. If you identify with your own youth or beauty or intellect or accomplishments, then there is a constant gnawing knowledge that these attributes can and will vanish. I am writing this book to assure you that this is not the case. Basically, you are no more of a physical being than I am, and I have donned and discarded more bodies than I care to tell. Personalities who do not exist do not write books, and I am quite independent of a physical image, and so are you. Consciousness creates form. It is not the other way around. All personalities are not physical. It is only because you are so busily concerned with daily matters that you do not realize that there is a portion of you who knows that its own powers are far superior to those shown by the ordinary self. You have lived other existences, and that knowledge is within you though you are not consciously aware of it. I hope that this book will serve to release the deeply intuitive self within each of my readers, and to bring to the foreground of consciousness whatever particular insights will serve you most.